And I'm Shaylee Sanders reporting live from Gilmer where that young East Texas mother lost her life last night. We spoke to her family about who that woman was and the son she left behind. Police tell me it's taken months for the results of Glenn Barton's DNA test to be returned to their department. If you look at Farm to Market Road 315, which is right behind me, you would have no idea that it was completely covered in water earlier today. Joseph Mendoza used these stairs to climb to the top of the fair building where he allegedly fired several rounds from a pistol. De Leon was driving a bobcat and reversed it into a large pit where he was killed instantly. Well, Jennifer, the sun may be shining, but that doesn't mean that these roads are safe to drive on. They started banging on the school bus windows yelling for the driver to stop. People in this immediate neighborhood behind me are being allowed back in their homes. Authorities say he opened fire. They responded with fire and that's when they say that he took off into these woods that you see behind me. Take a look at this. This gravel and tar had melted onto their tires, making it incredibly hard for them to even drive their cars. They spent several hours in a parking lot trying to decide what exactly caused the problem and who would be responsible for paying for the damages. Three individuals started fist fighting once he arrived on scene. Price says those men were pepper sprayed and taken into custody. Tyler investigators have secured an arrest warrant for Elijah E.J. Williams, who is now wanted for murder. Authorities tell us they believe Williams was involved in the death of Brianna Young, who was shot at P.T. Cole Park on Tuesday, July 30th. Well, did you find yourself overeating at your own Independence Day barbecue? Turns out you may have picked that habit up when you were a child. Well, here in East Texas, local leaders are sharing why the 50th anniversary of Dr. Martin Luther King Jr.'s I Have a Dream speech is so important. And how easy is that? How quick is that? The Even rest I is... could do that. Are you Even sure? I... Yeah. So are you going to try this this evening? I'm a little challenged when it comes to cooking. <laughs> Thirty-year-old Desmond Black broke through the barriers, trying to get to the body of 23-year-old Chris Mass. Black screamed that he wanted to see his cousin, as police quickly carried him away. Naisha's father held her back when she pulled up to the scene. She tells me she's five months pregnant with Mass's child. Mass, a well-known football and basketball star at Chapel Hill High School, who later joined the football team at SFA, <laughs> had several friends, family, and former teammates who filled the mall parking lot, searching for answers behind his death. Officer Don Martin says it all started when a Henderson man, Ricky Neal Jr., came to the mall to buy some shoes. Officer Martin says Neal Jr. then saw the boyfriend of a girl he had been talking to through Twitter and approached him. So he went over and got into a verbal confrontation with them. Uh, through the, the, uh, the uh, communications between the two, he said, let's go outside and take care of it. Let's go outside and fight. Then Chris got involved. Uh, Chris Mass, which is the one that is deceased here, uh, he said, hey, what's going on? Officer Martin says Mass followed the men outside to the parking lot. Uh, as they were coming out to the car where Ricky was, Ricky then pulled out a gun. They all said, hey, 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 uh, you know, what's going on? We're just here to fight. And then he said, you want some of this, you want some of this, and started firing rounds. Officer Martin says Mass was shot twice and died at the scene. We spoke to Mass's mother who asked their pastor of 20 plus years to describe her son. Very well liked, loved by his friends. Uh, uh, my son and, and he grew up uh, playing sports together. Chris was an exceptional athlete. The most shocking is probably the fact uh, that he really didn't have much to do with it. The pastor says he hopes the loss felt here today will remind everyone of how precious life is. All right, there we go. Here I am. Let's get your footprints. This healthy baby girl is eight pounds, 12 ounces. I'm just so blessed. I'm so blessed. She's so perfect. And what makes this day even more special is that dad was able to be a part of this unforgettable moment all the way from Japan. Um, honestly, I was happy to hear her screaming and just knowing that she was healthy. Jesse Mona is stationed at the Yokosuka Naval Base and wasn't even sure if FaceTiming would be a possibility. It's okay. <laughs> yeah, look at you. 
but thanks to timing, technology, and a determined family, he didn't miss a second. I'm ready to uh, ready to see my baby girl. Ta da! <laughs> I'm going to see you in a little bit, little girl. Oh, she's moving around enough. <laughs> Good day for a birthday party. Wish you could be here live, but this is the next best thing. This is unbelievable. No, no time in history have I been able to have something like this. It's, it's very, very cool. We have a beautiful little girl. Four generations all present for little Ellery's birthday, including big brother Ben. My first thought was she was so perfect. Jesse and Erica say it will probably be December or January before they're all reunited. But Erica says having family here by her side is exactly what will carry her through until they're all together again. The moon knows. Yeah, I think so. Yeah. There's really no words to describe how amazing it is to be able to hold your baby girl, to be able to have your husband here watching and, and to know that he's going to be able to hold her soon as well. Shaylee Sanders, East Texas News.